this is gonna be a weird video mostly because I'm talking about two different VR headsets and most people have tried like zero or maybe one but VR is a big part of the channels I had a few qualms with the Odyssey Plus uh, namely the cable was acting weird bending itself up. I wanted one that I could replace if I needed to. So now I have one, the Reverb G2. Most of the footage you'll be seeing here is of hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades, though there is a little bit of Half-Life Alex mixed in here because I have a couple comments on that game's performance and this computer. Let me start with the good. It's very comfortable. The Reverb G2 is smaller than the Odyssey Plus and with that lighter, I liked the Halo head strap on the Odyssey. It was just easy to slip on and off. But having that top strap on the reverb really helps the headset. Uh, it balances the weight a lot more evenly. The head strap is actually inspired by that of the Valve Index because so much of the Reverb G2's identity is the Valve Index. The actual reason I was most interested in the reverb is because they talked that it has Valve audio and Valve lenses. This is what they meant by Valve audio. The Valve Index has these open backed speakers that kind of sit about half an inch off of your ears. The idea is that because they're so open, they actually have a lot of sound staging. You're actually able to physically point out where in a three dimensional space a sound is coming from. And that is reflected in the Reverb G2. They're not as premium feeling as those on the Valve Index. Not that I'd know, I haven't tried one yet. But the actual sound is phenomenal. I feel like I'm actually able to better identify where in 3D space a sound is coming from. The Odyssey had decent headphones, but they were not fantastic. These are fantastic. I haven't done any just like proper listening with them. Like sitting down and just opening my desktop and just working. That seems a little weird, but eh, who knows? Maybe I'll give that a shot. They sound great. And then I can tell you just how good I think they are compared to the Grados. But they're not just a guaranteed winner. I think that's an important thing to get across. I don't think there is a unanimous winner between the Odyssey Plus and the Reverb G2. For instance, going back to that Valve Audio, I was hopeful that that might include the microphone. So I recorded some stuff with the microphone. I'm very thankful that that solved my problem. I spent so long on this puzzle when I first played the game, but all you need to do is just move this here. What? Okay. I know what's going on. That, that's making a normal sound. And I don't have to worry about the headcrabs at this point in the game because it's only after you fight your first um, headcrab on its own that you have to deal with um, them coming off of the zombies. I think it crashed. Screen went black, it definitely crashed. <laughs> okay. Doesn't sound great. And I know what you're thinking, you could just turn the gain down, but here's the thing, I've already done that. I've reduced the gain by 2 decibels, I've actually reduced the volume level within Windows by about 20%. I've added a limiter, I've added a compressor, it still just clips. It's like a DS microphone, any amount of sound just blows it completely, which is very disappointing. Speaking of disappointing, it is Valve Index lenses but they're physically smaller, so your field of view is restricted. I kind of feel like I'm looking down like a cardboard tube at everything, which just doesn't feel great. To make matters worse, the IPD adjustment on the Reverb G2 only goes out to 68 millimeters. That's the distance between each pupil. Mine's about 70. So I need a little bit of an extra boost, but I just don't get it. So the actual range where I can see clearly what I'm doing is pretty narrow and I have a problem getting that to stay in focus the entire time. And then there's the controllers. I'm personally not a fan of the two face buttons, the grip and the trigger, a menu button and a control stick. I like the touchpad. I feel like the Vive wand kind of crawled so everything else with the touchpad could run. A touchpad and a control stick like what's on the Odyssey Plus controllers just feels like a way better option. I can use the control sticks for movement, and then I can use the touchpad for, say, accessing the weapons menu in Half-Life Alex, or dropping a magazine, opening the cylinder, operating the gun in H3 VR. I could use the streamlined controls in H3, but there's a number of things you can't do with the streamlined controls, and I'm a sucker for doing weird things with guns. Performance-wise, H3 VR runs exactly the same, and Half-Life Alex. 
No! Is this unwatchable in OBS? It's, it's like I'm seeing all the timelines at once. One timeline at a time. No, I could stick my ca my phone camera in here and show you. Look at that. Still as crash and bug prone as ever. I just don't know why it doesn't run quite right on my system. I've added actually, I've doubled the amount of RAM in the computer from 16 to 32 gigabytes specifically because I thought it might have been an out of memory error I was having. Doesn't seem to be the case, which is unfortunate. But while I'm here, two tangents. The desktop I own is an HP Omen, and if you buy a pre-built Omen, you can't actually adjust the clock speed of your RAM, which would be a problem if you get new RAM. In the computer was HyperX Fury 3200 MHz sticks, two 8 gigs. I replaced them for two 16s, of course, they're Vengeance, at the same clock speed. But Task Manager was only saying they were running at 2166 MHz, which is incorrect. You can't actually change that in the BIOS for this computer. In fact, all you can do is change your boot device or load order, which is stupid. So I actually had to download AMD Master, which allows you to, in software, edit the finer specs of your computer. And I just bumped the clock speed up to 1600 megahertz, which, because it's DDR memory, by the time it rebooted, it was at 3200, which was correct. But I shouldn't have had to do that. It should have just worked. But now that I had more RAM, I went into Half-Life Alex, and the textures just would not load. I was worried about why that might be the case, and then I found out that there's a setting called Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling that when it's on Half-Life Alex just doesn't want to work right. But if you disable it, look at the footage, it just, it looks good. I still can't see what I'm doing nine times out of 10. Or at the very least, I can see what I'm doing, but not very well. But I can definitely tell that those textures look like how they should look. I have no idea why jumping from the Odyssey to the Reverb would change how that setting works so drastically. I never had this problem with the Odyssey, but sure. So if you need to do either of those things, there's your solutions. Should you have had to change settings in Windows or download new software just to change your clock speed to what it should be or make the game load textures? No. I don't know why things are like this now. It sucks. So, should you buy the Odyssey Plus or the Reverb G2? I don't think it really matters. The Odyssey has bigger screens and they're OLED too. So it looks better, even if it is a slightly lower resolution. It's just nice to have that color and also an IPD that can go out as that far. But both are fine. There's a lot of things that the Odyssey excels at. I like its controllers the most. Its screens are the most vibrant and the biggest of the two. But there's also a lot of things I like about the Reverb G2. I like that it's a detachable cable. If something goes wrong, I can just ditch the cable and buy a new one. I feel like it's a little better at light leak, but I don't really notice light leak after 10 minutes in VR. Its sound is phenomenal. But there's just so many weird little things that I'm just not very happy with. Ultimately, I think by this time next year, I'll have gotten used to it. I don't think I'll be doing a lot of VR stuff uh, until probably about November or December, because I'm going to be working on a game. So I'll put this down for a little while, and when I come back, it'll be more or less a fresh set of eyes. I will say though that a lot of these problems just seem to stem from the fact that Windows Mixed Reality is like the sloppy seconds of VR. It's inside out VR and it's not Facebook. Base Station VR just works better. If you have the physical space in your room for base stations, use base stations. I don't. There are like three places I could hypothetically put base stations but they would get in the way. This isn't my room. So given that and the space constraints, I need an inside out tracked headset and I'm not gonna give Facebook money. So it's a Windows Mixed Reality. And Windows Mixed Reality is just such a wild grab bag. There are some really awful headsets in the Windows Mixed Reality scene and the default Windows Mixed Reality controllers are terrible. And it also has to accommodate the HoloLens 
And the HoloLens just sucks. I've developed for a HoloLens. Nothing big. But it was just terrible. Your computer had to be set up a very specific way to communicate with the HoloLens. Its field of view was miserable. It's like looking through the little slits in a tank. Its color reproduction was insane. It just didn't work right. But because the runtime environment it is built for is now what Windows uses for VR, I assume that's going to cause some problems. I don't know. I would just rather have a Windows headset that I just plug in and it just starts talking to Steam VR immediately. When I want to start VR, I click the little VR button in Steam. That would be the dream. So honestly, just get whichever one of the two is cheapest. That's the easiest way to put it. If nice audio is that much of a deal breaker or a deal maker, then yeah, get the reverb. But if you really want a bigger screen, not necessarily a better screen, then get the Odyssey. I think Samsung might have discontinued the Odyssey, so don't pay ridiculous prices. If they're asking for more than like 500, 550, maybe don't. I would say if you can't find them on the actual manufacturer's websites like HP, which is where I bought my reverb, or on Samsung's website, then look for gently used ones that are available online and have it shipped to you. There are some points on both that I think would keep me from going, yes, definitely get this one. I think if the actual lenses in the G2 were larger, then yeah, this would be the go-to of the two. But if the Odyssey had a detachable cable, then yeah, that would be the surefire winner. Of the two, they're both fine, and they seem to be the best two of the mixed reality headsets. If you can get one or the other for a decent price, then yeah, I totally recommend one or the other. But if you already have an Odyssey Plus and they're looking to upgrade, you've honestly got a really good VR headset. The resolution could be higher, but your screens are huge and you have this really wonderful amount of peripheral vision. You have some of the best controllers for Windows Mixed Reality. The Reverb's controllers blow. I'm still using the Odyssey controllers because they're that nice. But if you have a Reverb, you don't have a slouch either. Again, they brag about the audio because the audio is worth bragging about. Those speakers are great. Cherish them. While I've got you, I have a game. It's coming out tomorrow. It's called One. Um, I recorded a tiny synopsis in the Half-Life Alex footage. I don't know if you want to listen to that, Mike, but here it is. Um, but yeah, One is an interactive text adventure about a pill. I'm just going to keep this brief. It's about a pill and the ramifications of this pill. It's kind of about uh, my own asexuality and aromanticism, but it's also about um, you know recreational drug culture and a number of other things. I don't know how good or bad this is sounding, so I'm gonna leave it brief, and if there's more to say, then I'll say it at the end of the video. One is set in a distant future where romantic highs can be experienced by simply taking a pill. You, the player, cannot actually take that pill, though, because of some kind of disorder, neurodivergency, and if you do take it, it will kill you and you have to navigate a world that really, really, really wants you to take this pill. It's kind of about recreational stimulant culture, like caffeine and things. It's weirdly normalized. Let's maybe consider why that is. But it's also about my experiences as an asexual and possible aromantic. It's a text adventure game, so I really don't have anything to show you other than the key art, which is available on Redbubble as posters, stickers, prints, and shirts. So if you really, really want this design, you can get it over there. Also, while you're on Redbubble, check out Utopian Scholastic. Check out Applied Mathematics. Check out No Battle Royale T120. I have now four designs up there. It'd be really cool if you considered getting some. Stickers, I think, just start at about a buck fifty. I don't know. A couple dollars from your purchase do go directly to me, so you are helping me by buying some of this art. If you want it, there it is. Otherwise, thanks for watching the video. Still got some sort of revenue either way. Ad revenue. Nice. R run the run the Patreon thing. If you like this video and you'd like to see more, I'd recommend subscribing. Patreon and social media links are in the description.